Grace and peace to each of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And welcome to the Community Holy Thursday service as this wonderful community choir leads us in worship this night. There is no way to truly experience the joy and blessing of the Easter resurrection without first experiencing the agony of the cross. Tonight's program, Come Touch the Road by Pepper Toplin, allows us to meet Jesus in an intimate way. Jesus the healer, Jesus the servant, Jesus the Lord of Easter. You are in for a special blessing and we are grateful for your presence here with us. Uh, I give thanks to live in a community where Christians will cross church lines and gather together for worship. Uh, you will again have this opportunity Sunday morning at 7 a.m. as we gather at Blaylock Park for the Easter sunrise service. In case of bad weather, come to Wiggins Presbyterian Church and we will worship together there. Uh, I give thanks for the many talented and gifted people in this community. And I'm especially grateful tonight for our choral directors, Carol Pierce, Chris Babb, and Karen McQueen. Also grateful for our readers, Paul Hardy, Brother Robbie Reichert, and Brother David Perry, our sound crew, Paul Hardy and Josh Warden. And we have a number of churches represented in this choir tonight, which include Big Level Baptist, Bond Methodist, First Baptist of Wiggins, Episcopal Church, Wiggins Presbyterian, and Wiggins First Methodist. And there's a couple of wonderful soloists that will be featured tonight, Chris Babb and Brittany Jones. Please join me now in giving thanks to them and thanks to God for them. We will celebrate Holy Communion as part of tonight's service. There will be a liturgy on the screen and the congregation will read the bold print. Um, and as we begin to serve you, you will be asked to come forward by way of the walls, uh, the outer aisles there, and return to your chairs by way of this center aisle. Uh, if you're unable to make your way forward and would like to receive communion, please ask your neighbor to alert the servers on that side as they come through the line. We want to make sure that every person that desires to be served is served. This is not any kind of Methodist convention. It is the Lord's table, and we all want to share uh, one with another. Uh, we will end the service tonight in complete darkness. Uh, after a time of silent prayer, the side lights will come on for you to be able to make safe exits. So please just be patient or spend the time in prayer uh, here in, in darkness and in silence. And when the lights come on, then you can make your way to the door again in silence uh, and in prayer as we go forth this night. It is a beautiful night in which to gather. And again, we are grateful for your presence. Uh, will you bow your heads as we lift our hearts to God in prayer? Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for who you are, and that in your divine love you chose to give your only Son to be our Savior. What amazing grace and love you have shown, unworthy though we may be. Be with us this night as we worship. May your Holy Spirit live and breathe through our words and our music, that we may all experience and view the presence and the power of Christ. And that we may be forever changed and strengthened in love of you, O God, and in love of neighbor, to love and to serve others as you called us to do. We pray all of this in the mighty and holy name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names. Amen. Amen. She had suffered for 12 years and had spent all she had searching for a cure. Then, one day, in an act of faith, this woman from Galilee quietly reached out to touch the hem of Christ's robe. She was instantly healed. The robe was just a piece of cloth, yet when Christ was present, there flowed a great healing power. As we gather here today, this could be just another oral presentation, but we pray that the Spirit of Christ will live in our words and music as we invite you to come. Come encounter the presence and power of Christ. Come, touch the road. Thank you. 
experience Christ's compassion and healing. Later, on a mountain, the road reflected His holiness and power. Jesus took three of His disciples up the mountain and was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and His clothes became white as the light. Moses and Elijah appeared with Him, and a voice came from a cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. Certainly this was a powerful encounter for the disciples. His shining robe and the voice from the cloud burned into their memories. Though they would face many difficult days, these memories would give them tremendous confidence as they preached the Lordship and Gospel of Christ. Behold, the Lord is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. 
many were wondering if this could really be their new king. Others had already witnessed Christ's power and shouted, Blessed is the king of Israel. Who is the 
Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. And if you are forgiven. Father Almighty, it is right that we should always and everywhere give you thanks and praise. Only you are God. You created all things and called them good. You made us in your own image. Even when you rebelled against your love, you did not desert us. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our God and King, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. You loved the world so much. You sent your only Son to be our Savior. The Lord of all life came to live among us. He healed and died. <coughs> Eight with sinners, and one for you and new people by water and the Spirit. We saw His glory. Yet He humbled Himself in obedience to your will, freely accepting death on the cross. By dying, He freed us from unending death. By rising from the dead, He gave us everlasting life. On the night in which He gave Himself for us, the Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving you thanks, He broke the bread and gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup, and after he returned thanks to you, gave the cup to them and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we experience anew the presence of the Lord Jesus and look forward to his coming and final victory. Christ is high. Christ is Send your Holy Spirit on us gathered here out of love for you and on these gifts. Help us to know in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine the presence of Christ who gave his body and blood for all. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in service to all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all glory and honor to Jesus I would invite those that will be assisting in the service to come forward to the table. After witnessing the events of the week, the disciples were now certain that Jesus would be their new king. What happened, happened next left them wondering what kind of king he would be. After the Passover meal, he rose and laid aside his garments. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples. Jesus removed his robe to take on the form of a servant. His clothes had been made even and had reflected heaven's glory. But now his robe was laid aside to teach the disciples an enduring lesson of humility.
In Philippians we read that Jesus took upon Himself the form of a servant. He humbled Himself. Became obedient unto death. Even the excruciating death of the cross. He demonstrated this obedience unto death through His arrest, His trial, and His crucifixion. After He was tried, the soldiers mocked Him and stripped Him of His garment, replacing it with a purple robe. They put a crown of thorns on His head and hailed Him as King. Through every step of the way, it was clear He had become the King. King of suffering.
body was laid in a borrowed tomb. The stone was rolled into place. The grave was sealed as his body lay silently wrapped in the shroud of death. The Bible promises that death has lost its power. 1 Corinthians 15, 55-57 says, O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and touch His linen shroud, not to mourn the tragedy of death, but to remember that these grave clothes will soon lay empty, left behind on the floor of the tomb.